So don't look at your fear and say, this giant's so much bigger than me. Look at your fear and say, this giant's not bigger than my God. You see, you can be larger than giants because God makes you larger. It doesn't matter what you're facing. God is bigger. It doesn't matter what you're facing over the next week, the next, next month, or the next year. It just doesn't matter if you had one giant or five giants ganging up on you. God is bigger, and God will be with you through it all. God is bigger than your giant, and he will protect you if you choose to move forward. Don't believe me? Psalms 18, verse 2. Look at it, would you please? In fact, I think it would be appropriate for us to read it together. It's on the screen. Here's what it says. The Lord is my rock. Read it with me. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my Savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. Maybe you ought to memorize that one too. Quote that every day. Because when Goliath comes in there and starts jiggling the lock on your door, starts huffing and puffing and wanting to blow your house down, you just quote that. It says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my Savior. He's my, he's my protection. He's my shield. He's the power that saves me. So first of all, name your giant. Two, ask God to replace your fear with his faith. Three, move forward. And the last one, it's just short. Celebrate God's victory. Celebrate God's victory. Again, you might be saying, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, I, I don't have the victory yet. <laughs> My giant is still bearing down on me. He's still coming out to taunt me. But I want you to know that you can celebrate the victory even now because the victory is the Lord's. The victory has already happened. In fact, let me show you a couple of things. First, back to our story in, in, in 1 Samuel 17, verse 50, it says this. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Uh, and then it goes, verse 51, Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from a sheath. David used it to kill him and cut his head off. You want to know what the ultimate insult is to Goliath? <laughs> is that David takes his sword and cuts his head off it with it. This is why the Bible says that there's no weapon that, what's it say? No weapon that's formed against shall prosper. None. Zero, zip, nada. I love that about God. Now again, you saw how big that sword is. It's as big as I am. I can only imagine, I would love to have been there to watch David pull that thing out of that, Goliath is laying there, uh, maybe gurgling or something like this, and his shield bearer, I don't know where his shield bearer is, but he's probably dropped the shield and, Whoo, I'm out of here, you know. And David struggles to pull that sword out. And I can only imagine he probably had to, whoo, and then the celebration began. The sign of ultimate victory is using the enemy's sword to kill the enemy. And when the Philistines saw their champion dead, what did they do? They turned and ran. David, with an unlikely weapon of a stone and a sling, took down one of the greatest warriors of all time, and he did it with faith. He conquered the giant with the Lord on his side. And you know, while King Saul and all the other Israelites, they saw Goliath as too big to hit, David saw him as too big to miss. I love that. 